I apologize that this will be a video played with my recording made earlier, anticipating that it will happen. I, being a teacher, I sometimes I have lose my voice. So I probably have to apologize, to accept my apology and just watch the video with my recording made a few days earlier. And if there are any questions or comments, I'll be happy to, to say my voice for answers. Thank you very much. Thanks, <laughs> Marek the what and why in tactile graphics, ensuring that assistive technology really assists users with congenital blindness in reading raised diagrams. For a long time, children and students with a visual impairment. This is true not only of places where tactile diagrams are not easily available, but also of countries with highly developed special needs services. This is confirmed by these two quotations. A university student from Nepal. When I was at school, all that the teacher told us about geometry was that it is a branch of mathematics. Or this quotation from an American lady now in her 50s. I remember being told that some set of lines was supposed to represent a 3D box, and that the reason I didn't understand this was because I wasn't trying. So I've memorized a few drawings of the simplest objects, but that's not the same as understanding them. Recent decades are marked with growing interest in design and production of tactile adaptations of educational materials used in a wide range of school and university subjects, and also as a powerful tool for providing access to areas believed to be inaccessible to persons with total blindness, such as visual art, for example, paintings. Technology has come to aid in at least two ways to make tactile graphics accessible. New methods and materials for producing raised graphics, and new devices providing audio output, that is audio description, to give blind persons independence in exploring raised diagrams, maps, and works of art. It seems then that availability of tactile graphics should no longer be a problem. But does availability, even with audio devices providing audio description, always mean accessibility? The next few slides show several methods of producing tactile graphics and a few devices adding audio output. Termoforming, swell paper. For this, special paper is needed on which all black lines and textures swell when exposed to high temperature. Ultraviolet printing, 3D embossing in leather, 2.5D printing on a 3D printer, thermographic tablet technology used in print industry for slightly raised decorative effect. But Edward Antorovsky, a Polish scientist based in Canada, developed special rail powder it is applied to wet print. Then the graphics is placed on a conveyor belt of a machine producing high heat. The powder melts and expands, making graphics highly tactile. As for devices which assist exploration of graphics by adding audio description, smart pens and pen print are the most common. Here is a smart pen in action, assisting exploration of a tactile photograph of a teapot from Boston Museum. Although smart pens are a great help, their big disadvantage is that they occupy one hand of the person exploring graphics, preventing use of both hands 
which is the correct way of reading graphics. The Talking Tactile tablet is free from this problem. It works like a touchpad, allowing use of both hands and providing audio output after pressing a particular point of the graphics. The device developed by Touch Vision in India also solves the problem and has an additional advantage of using a low-cost stand in a smartphone application instead of a large, heavy and expensive talking tablet. Africa Africa is the world's second largest and second most populous continent. These audio messages give vital information about objects presented as graphics, but they do not help understand the graphics itself. For example, the relation between a 3D object and its two-dimensional representation. To understand this professionally designed diagram showing the structure of a plant cell, the explorer should first understand the concept of a cross-section. Otherwise, the same diagram can easily be taken for a map of a park, understanding which requires understanding a different type of spatial relations. Audio description of the two diagrams will tell us only what they represent, but not why. Let us take another example. This painting shows Van Gogh's room, furnished with simple wooden furniture. Even a simplified audio description would give a person born blind a good idea of what the room looks like. A wooden bed at the front, a small table at the back, and a chair on the left. But the same description added to a tactile adaptation of the painting would only confuse the blind explorer who would almost certainly find it impossible to connect verbal description to the maze of mysterious lines and textures in the adaptation. This should not be surprising if we look at these attempts at a drawing a table by congenitally blind children. A few circles, or a rectangle with four lines representing legs extending in all directions from the corners. The two diagrams reconstruct the way in which the table was explored. A session with the Hungry Fingers transfer graph a tool for explaining the relation between objects and drawings, may help understand the concept of projection, in this case, side views of a table, a chair and a bed. But an adaptation of Van Gogh's painting made with such drawings would leave one wondering why Van Gogh was a great artist. But perhaps the living room, a 3D painting by Aishwarya Pillai, a blind artist from India could prompt an idea for creating an accessible adaptation of Van Gogh's painting. For assistive technology to really support reading tactile graphics, the users must already understand various types of spatial relations represented as drawings. Frequent exposure to tactile graphics and training in correct techniques of reading tactile graphics will increase confidence with more complex graphics and effectiveness for devices audio describing the diagrams. No assistive device will help a person born blind understand a tactile adaptation of this 19th century painting showing two peasants, one standing and one sitting on grass, when the blind person says, I can just about understand a drawing of a man standing, but not when someone is sitting or doing something. This can only be solved by training, for example with the tool called Fleximan, a flat magnetic stick figure which can be used to show various postures, walking, running, bending down, etc. Someone once said that drawings are like a language, but for persons born blind it is a foreign language, but any language can be taught and more importantly, any language can be learned. But one must start with the basics. In the case of tactile graphics, these lessons must start from lines through geometric shapes, 
to drawings of objects, people, animals, buildings, etc. Only then, the wide variety of drawings and diagrams used in education will be understood. And only then, the technology designed to support reading graphics will be fully effective. Thank you for your attention. I'll be happy to answer any questions which you may have. Please contact me at fourblindkids at gmail.com. Thank you very much.